Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be part two of my June wrap up. I had a very good reading month in June, I managed to finish 14 books. Um, I will link above the video for the um, talking about books 1 to 7 but now I'm going to talk about books 8 to 14. The second half of the month was really really good, it was more of a middle grade um, reading half um, because I was taking part in Whatever You want Wantathon and I was on the Middle Grade Monarchs team and if you read books that were in the genre for the team that you were on you got extra points. So I really did try and um, make the most of that and read quite a few Middle Grade books, some that were new um, and some that were already on my shelves. But first off I had to finish off the set reading for the month and this was my book club pick. We decided to go with an Agatha Christie for the month of June and we picked up The Murder of Roger Ackroyd and this is a Hercule Poirot novel. Um, can't quite say Hercule Poirot, um, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> um, this book was a bit meh for me. I think with this book I have realised that Agatha Christie isn't for me. Um, this is the third book of hers I've read. I read... Um, the first two books in the Poirot and Miss Marple series um, a couple of years ago and they were okay, I enjoyed them and again this one it was okay, I enjoyed it. I think her writing style is a little bit too dry for me. When we talked about it in the book club uh, the others were talking about the dry humour. I didn't get the humour so much. Um, I didn't, I wasn't drawn into it, you know they were all had theories about and upon theories upon theories about what was going on and um, and I just didn't I didn't get drawn into it that way so for me it wasn't uh, a great great start to the second half of the month um I did get on with it um in terms of actual reading the story I didn't find that I was forcing myself to read it it just they aren't a right she isn't a writing style for me she isn't an author for me sadly so this is unlikely to lead into more Agatha Christie. And then we get into the rest of the month which was all middle grade um, and I had a fantastic time. Um, so uh, I was a bit naughty and I popped into Waterstones with originally with the intention of picking up a book to um, continue a series and that was the first book that I read. Uh, that book is Dragon Legend by Kevin and Katie Sang. This is a following on from Dragon Mountain, um, which I read earlier on in the year. And I will try and link the uh, wrap up for that one. Basically, it's about four children who have discovered that dragons exist. And they have to go on a quest to reunite eight pearls. With those pearls they have the power to stop the dragon of death from taking over the human world. Um, this is following on from that, they're continuing to try and find some, some of the pearls um, and they come into some danger and they lose each other a little bit and some of the people lose themselves. Can't really say any more than that, um, you do need to read them if you want to know more. Anything else I say would give it all away. I really enjoyed it and I've already started bugging my sister to let my nephew read the first book because he hasn't read it yet so that I can lend him this one. There is a third book due out later on this year, I think that's called Dragon City and I will definitely be picking that one up when it comes out so that I can continue the series. And from there I had decided to try and finish off a middle grade series that I'd had on the go and the first book I needed to read to continue that was The Tower of the Winds by H.L. Dennis. This was the fourth book in her Secret Bakers series about a group of children who are trying to crack the mysteries of a document that no one can read. As with the previous three books, the uh, children are on a quest to um, decipher more clues so that will help them with the manuscript and they go from there. There's some danger. Um, these books increasingly as they went on um, put the children in danger and other people in danger and um, she does yes um, this, these books although middle grade I would say they're definitely the older age of middle grade so if you've got a nine-year-old 
maybe not for them however if they have the reading age and understanding of a 12 year old then yes i would suggest that you let them read this series my nephew is coming up on 10 years old he actually read this series and really enjoyed it um, and he's been rereading them as I've been handing them back to him. Um, so I think once he gets his hands on this, it'll be another one that goes back onto his reread pile. And then the next book was another middle grade and this was one that I'd had on my shelves uh, since last year so again it was reading off of my current TBR and that is Starfell, Willow Moss and Lost Day and it's very shiny so I don't know how well you can actually see that. This is by Dominique Valente, this is the first book in the Starfell series which is about Willow Moss who is a witch um, with what have with what she thinks is not very good magic because she only has the ability to find lost things. However, the most powerful witch in the land comes to her for help because last Tuesday has disappeared and she needs Willow Moss to help find it. Willow Moss from there goes on an adventure across the land of Starfell and meets new people, makes new friends um, and goes on a journey to find the missing day. And I really enjoyed it, um, so much so that I immediately wanted to go to my nearest bookstore and pick up book two in the series, which I'm looking forward to doing once I get out of lockdown, um, or not a lockdown, I'm on um, self-isolation. Uh, but my intention was, because my self-isolation falls within my birthday, um, I was going to go to the bookstore and treat myself on my birthday to the next book in the series and that can't happen now so it's going to have to wait until after the end of isolation but I'm looking forward to picking up book two I really enjoyed it um, this would be great for any uh, age range um, in the middle grade range um, and earlier if you think your children are up to it there's no real um, terror or horror or danger in there um, everybody comes through it as they should so I would suggest that it's good for any age group then from there I needed to continue my series read of the secret breakers so I moved on to the pirate sword as with tower of the winds again the four children are um, trying to crack the code they have more clues to crack um, this time it takes them to North America and they're travelling around North America um, and they find more clues that help them. Um, can't really say anything more than that because anything I say would just get, would spoil the entire series. I Like I say, again, increasing levels of um, instances of death and peril for the children. Um, so you do need to be wary of that when you are giving this to your children to read but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I would recommend them. And from there I moved on to what I think is actually the best book that I have read this month and that is Nevermore The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I missed out on this book uh, when it first came out back in 2018, I think, 2017, 2018, uh, 2017. Um, back at that point, it was being likened to Harry Potter um, being the next Harry Potter. For me, this is nothing like Harry Potter. So don't go into that within with that in your head, because where... I can see that it's a young woman who finds out that she, a young girl who might have a power. Um, that's where the comparison ends. On Morrigan Crow's 11th birthday, she is destined to die. But before that can happen, she is whisked away by a man called Jupiter North to the land of Nevermore. And from there, she is entered into some trials to enter the Wondrous Society. Um... She has to go through the four trials and see what happens to her from there. I won't give it away what happens to her. Um, but along the way, she makes friends, she makes enemies. And I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it so much so that 
uh, like with Starfell, as soon as I get out of self-isolation, I am going to the nearest bookstore and I'm buying Wondersmith, which is book two, and Hollow Pox, which is book three, because I really want to continue the series. I enjoyed them that much. Um, it's not often that series will grab me like that and I will have to read them and um, especially these types of series, I, romance series, I will just read and read and read. But fantasy um, and science fiction series, it does take me a while to get grabbed by a series and read it and read it and read it. So the fact that I immediately want to go to um, the bookshop and get the next book actually says a heck of a lot to me about how good and how much I enjoyed this story. Still not five star, however, it's definitely between four and five stars and I highly recommend it. Again, like I say, she is at risk of death on her 11th birthday. Uh, there are risks to her while she is in the land of Nevermore. So there are some things in there that could be troubling, but, but I think if your child has read Harry Potter, especially the first few Harry Potters, they, they'll they have no problem with Nevermore. I absolutely adored it. And like I say, other than that, that is the only comparison I would make with Harry Potter. And I love Nevermore and I love this world. And then my final book of the month was a series completion. And that is Circle of Fire by H.L. Dennis, the last book in the Secret Breaker series. I finally got through them all um, and I was glad I did. Again, I enjoyed this book more than the others. Again, risk of serious harm and death um, in this book. Uh, it is very, very adult. As the books go on, they start to become more and more adult in the themes that the author talks about. So like I say, again, older age, end of the age range. Really enjoyed it. It's the mystery, um, the mystery of the document we get answers. That's all I can say. Um, if I say any more, I will spoil it for you. But I did thoroughly enjoy it. Again, it takes them across the world. Uh, so it's not just confined to the UK. There are more clues for them to solve. Um, there are decisions to be made, choices to make. Um, and yes, it puts a lot on the shoulders of these four young people who by this point are in their mid-teens. Um, but I did really enjoy it. So much so that I haven't picked up anything else since I finished this book. And that's not because it's put me in a slump. It's just because I can't decide what I want to read next. So I do recommend this series, as I've said twice already in this video. Um, I don't know if they're in, available in bookshops. I know that my sister certainly got all these copies that I've been reading from eBay. Um, but yes, have a look. Give them a try for yourself if the mystery of an unsolvable document is up your street. So that was all the books that I read in the month of June. Like I say, it was a great month. Only one book that I really was disappointed in, and that was the Agatha Christie. Um, and again, like I say, I'm probably not going to pick up any more by her, which is really sad because she is quite a celebrated author in the UK. But, oh well, these things happen. Um, not really sure where I'm going from here with my reading. I'm, I haven't picked up anything yet. It's still very early July. Uh, if you've seen my July TBR, then you know that it's a complete mood reading month for me. Um, so I have no idea where my reading is going to take me. I haven't been able to pick anything up since I finished Circle of Fire. Um, but yes, we'll see what happens from here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel. I upload videos at 6.30pm UK time every single Monday with the occasional bonus video thrown in and I will see you all again next time. Bye!